Zed says, it may not be right here. But he's like, that's why you're the perfect seeker. You don't have all this history bogging you down with this is the way you should do it or this is the way you shouldn't do it. Your brain is free and clear, dude. The only thing limiting you is your imagination at this point. Yeah. You're the seeker. You write the rules. You don't have to abide by what's been done before. Carve your own path. And this is actually something that throughout the books is something that is beneficial to Richard because literally not spoiling anything, but Richard is a blank slate. So he has never been told how not to do something. So it really leaves him open to all the possibilities and people do tell him it doesn't work that way throughout the books and he'll he'll be like why yeah it does well we already had one instance of that when he healed kaylin from her weird psycho panic attack <laughs> thing by just calming himself and touching her shoulders and being like okay better yeah he just kind of went no this will work because yeah. This will obviously work. And then it fucking worked. Yeah. So I wouldn't really discard what Zed's telling him here. Although, again, in real life practice, if someone's like slipping away into death, don't just hold on to their shoulders and be like, come back to the light in your head. It won't work. Okay. You need to call 911. At this point, Richard kind of gets past the fact that he's not sure how they're going to get through or across the boundary. And he starts thinking about, well, what's going to happen once we're on the other side? He's like, I don't know where I'm going anyway. And Kaylin goes, no, dumbass. I told you, I will guide you. I know the Midlands better than anybody. And Richard, naturally, he doesn't want to let her down, but he doesn't know how to do any of this. And so, naturally, he's going to take her up on her offer. Yeah, yeah, he's absolutely going to accept it. But I thought it was a little bit funny, too, that he was like, all right, and for my first trick, I must get us across the death boundary. <laughs> Which I, I wouldn't, yeah, I would be as, as like, fuck, I don't know what it... <laughs> I feel like he probably said it exactly like you just there said it. <laughs> like, all right, uh, <laughs> I guess here we go. <laughs> and Zed tells him he knows he thinks he's dumping all this on him. And this is, a, this is one of those things where he's kind of reiterating something we've already been told like five times. He knows he thinks he's dumping this all on him, but I'm not choosing you. You showed yourself to be the seeker. I'm just telling you that you are one. You just need to trust me that I know what I'm talking about. It almost kind of sounds like Zed is trying to pass the buck off onto Richard. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. That wasn't just me, was it? No. He's like, look, this ain't my fault. You said, I'm a seeker of truth. So that makes all of this your fault. Yeah. So figure it out. Yeah. It's like, I've been watching you forever, man. You're the seeker. It's not my fault. It's your fault. So don't hate me when, like, we have quads and shit chasing us. That's not my fault. That's on you. By the way, by the way, see that cloud up in the sky? Darkin's chasing you. The only reason Darkin would be chasing you is because you're the seeker. He said it too. It's literally not on me even like a little bit. I wasn't going to tell you. It almost seems like Zed is alluding to the fact that he could tell Richard, look, okay, fine. You're not the seeker anymore. Doesn't change a thing. Darkin is still coming after you. And whether I want you to have it or not, that sword is technically yours. <laughs> so what's done is done, dude. Get over it. <laughs> it is funny too, though, that this makes Richard doubt what he thought he knew earlier in the chapter about why Darkin's after him. Because earlier in the chapter, he thought Darkin was after him because of the book. But now that Zed's brought this up, now he's like, oh, maybe it's not because of the book. Maybe the book is kind of safe and maybe it's just because I'm the seeker. And that's when he starts pacing around and thinking about what he's going to do. I loved that scene because he stands up, he starts pacing, he's finally putting his brain to work. He's not trying to get out of it anymore. He's not trying to, and I hate saying make up an excuse as to why he can't do this, but he's actually taking Zed's advice. He's like, okay, think of the solution. This is my problem. There's no escaping it. How are we going to get through this? I did think it was a little bit funny, though, because he's trying to come up with a, a way to not be the seeker, right? But literally everything that he says and thinks here in this chunk make him the seeker. He's <laughs> like, Shar said, seek the answer or die. Not that I have to become the seeker. I mean, except it's kind of alluding to it. But whatever, we'll let that go. And then he goes, well, I could find the answers on my own, just like I always have. I don't need the sword to find the wizard. Again, proving Zed's point that you've always been the seeker. <laughs> At the end, he's like, why not take it? 
What could it hurt? He could use it to help some people. He didn't want to feel the anger he felt because it felt too good. Anger was wrong. He ends up coming to the conclusion he doesn't need to be the seeker, even though everything he thought about was like underlying the reason that he was a seeker. Do you know what I mean? Right. And the thing I found interesting about this is exactly what Shar said. Seek the answer or die. Dude, you don't have to know what you're doing is exactly what Shar was telling him. You just have to try and figure it out. You have to actively seek the answer. You don't have to figure it out. As long as you're looking, you can avoid death. I think she put it pretty plain. As long as you're trying to do something, anything, you're going to be okay. Even if she didn't have all of that foresight, it could be just that if you don't do anything, you're going to die. Yeah, you chill out in Westland, it's probably not a good choice. Right. (laughs) But the other side of it, I think, is that you don't have to have all the answers. You just have to be doing something to avoid being killed. And I think he kind of glazes over that a little bit. Even though the words came to his head, he didn't hit home the way that it would have to me. Yeah, that's what's funny to me is that all of that thinking leads him not to the thought that, all right, I should I should have the sword and I can just be the seeker. It'll be fine. He comes to the conclusion, nah, I'm going to tell my friend I'm going to turn him down. I'm not going to be the seeker. That's when Zed, before he has a chance to talk, turns to Kaylin and is like, tell him. Tell him how Darkin questions people. And Kaylin's like, "Mm, no, she's pretty reluctant. She already told him earlier in the book she wasn't going to go into detail about how Darkin killed people. But Zed pushes and he says, tell him about the curved knife he keeps at his belt. And that's when everybody gets real somber. Kaylin pulls Richard down to her level. She's sitting on the ground at this point. Um, I think to kind of get... (laughs) Essentially, get him to sit down because she's got some pretty devastating news to tell him. Now, before I say this, I don't actually think Kaylin has the foreknowledge of what happened to Richard's dad. She knows that he was murdered, but she doesn't know in what fashion. Um, But she tells Richard that Dark and Raw studies something called anthropomancy. What that is, is the sick fuck divines answers from inspecting living human entrails so he'll slice open a person's belly all their guts fall out and before they die you can look on the ground and i guess the shapes or whatever something can give you answers and this is how he gets the answers he needs which kind of explains what happened to richard's dad why it was such a violent nasty gross death and she goes on to say that This way of getting answers is kind of limited. You get a yes, you get a no, sometimes maybe a name, but not much more than that. And my immediate takeaway from this was that Richard's dad was brutally murdered for a yes, a no, or Richard's name, and nothing more. Okay. Now, at first, I think you're right. She didn't know. I've been thinking about this since you said that she didn't know. Because Richard didn't tell her the details. But I wonder if while Richard was asleep, they had a conversation because Zed didn't know a whole lot about Dark and Rawl, right? He can't have because Dark and Rawl came to power while he's been in Westland. Right, after Zed left. And you would imagine that if he knew Dark and Rawl was the one who caused that brutal murder, he would have been more on his toes before Caitlin came. So what I'm getting from that is that while Richard slept... Maybe there was a little bit more of a conversation than what we saw in which Zed said, by the way, you know, his dad died. You know how his dad died. And then she's like, oh, shit. You know who does that? Oh, all this stuff is connected. Could very well be. You know what? I like that theory, Jade. That's a good one. Because I just don't know how else they would have. Why else Zed would have known right then to push the button that he pushed and that Caitlin would have known to apologize immediately and like be so tender with him while she was telling him this news because when she was telling him about it before it was just about council members that he didn't know about right i'm with you i think she did apologize because she knew that this was something you had to be tender about because this is something that would hit him in the gut basically yeah so yeah that's my that's my new theory i mean maybe maybe i'm Maybe we are told about it at some point, and I'm just blanking right now, but... If we missed it, weigh in on this, guys. Uh, Let us know what you think. We're curious to know what you guys have to say about this. Absolutely, for sure. Let us know. And kind of what I was 
getting at earlier, Richard gets fucking pissed. He puts two and two together. This guy sliced my dad up, spilled his guts all over the floor for a yes or a no or my name, which I personally think it was. He got Richard's name. Spoiler, that's why he's being followed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Dark and Raw used Richard's dad to do. So he loses his goddamn mind at this point. Yeah. Completely off the charts at this point. He puts Darken in the picture. He made in his mind of his death. He has the answers that he's kind of been afraid, I think, at this point of having. But now he completely has and he knows the truth of what happened. And that rage, he inundates himself with it. Yeah. And he's never gone beyond letting himself be a little upset about something. He's never gone to like that next step of anger to where you're like, I'm going to fuck something up at this point. And he gets there. He reaches out for the Sword of Truth, and he can't see anything around him at this point. The anger from the sword was called by him. It wasn't the sword filling him with its rage at this point. He was calling the sword's rage to him, and he's the seeker. He was, he was, the seeker was calling the rage from the sword for the first time ever. With the knowledge of his dad's death, he finally gets a little bit of closure, but it didn't matter at this point because the only desire he has is vengeance. He wants to kill Dark and Raw. And he's never felt anything like that before. No, he wants to kill Dark and Raw in the worst possible way. Right. And he goes to pull the sword free. And at this point, it doesn't make it very clear. If he's just trying to get more of that anger, like that feeling to like rage through him, or if he's going to like pull that fucker out and be like, let's go. <laughs> like something is dying today. <laughs> I, I kind of picture him just charging the boundary with the sword. Like, I got the sword. That's all we need. Let's go, guys. Yeah. Zed chasing after him like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm mm -hmm. the hell down, buddy. Calm down, my boy. Calm down. Yeah. I mean, that is what he tries to do before he even gets the sword free, though. Zed is like his his calming force. He tries to get him to chill out, even though Richard tries to ignore that small part of him that's like, dude, you need to calm down. You need to regain control. He just looks at Zed and tells him that he accepts the role of Seeker with his teeth gritted. Zed tells Richard it's all right. He needs to relax and sit down. And you know what I think is all right? What's that, JD? Relaxing with another beer break. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. All right. Well, the second beer we're drinking tonight is Raspberry Shandy by Big Lake Brewing Company. The only thing that they have written on the can is that it's a refreshing Weiss beer brewed with real raspberry. I might be wrong, but I believe that Weiss beer is wheat, um, kind of like the Sam Adams cherry wheat that we had before. But this one's brewed with raspberry, so naturally it's right in line with some of my favorite beer. We actually have the guest from one of our previous episodes, Aaron, to thank for this. He brought it over for us to record with and left it in the fridge. So <laughs> thank you, Aaron. We are enjoying it very, very much. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. And we're back. And just like we're coming back to you, the world comes back to Richard. And his readiness to kill is pulled back just a little bit, but not his anger. Yeah, all his life he's been holding anger behind a wall. And that wall is down. It's been completely annihilated by this knowledge that he was just given. He sat down, letting go of the sword, but he didn't lock his anger away for the first time. He just kind of held it in. It's always there. It's always ready. And he kind of feels liberated by this, unashamed to be angry for the first time in like his entire life. I can kind of feel the emotion in that. For the first time, he's unashamed, you said. Yeah. That means this is one of the first times that he's letting the emotion of being pissed at somebody that killed his dad out. It's been weeks at this point. And sure, he's grieved. And sure, he was joking with Chase about what he would do to the guy who killed his dad. But he never let that anger flare at all. And that's something that you absolutely need to do in the grieving process, I think. Well, I just mean in life, too. There's, There are plenty of times when you get pissed at somebody... And you have every goddamn right 
to be mad at somebody for something if they do you wrong. You can you can come back from that after you get angry. You can 